Welcome back to the Coyote Car Channel. Stay tuned and you can learn how to clean one of these. So there are a lot of methods for cleaning these. You can use methylene, gasoline, water, I did lemonade, whatever you want to use. Anyways, uh, if you go to Home Depot, you can get one of these gun washes for ten dollars and I typically use this well I have used this this time on base coat and clear coat and um, I'm going to show you how I do that right now to get the guns cleaned out so if you spray a coat of paint and you want to spray another coat but you want to wait then what you can do is you can pour some of this fluid into the gun and spray it out and that should be sufficient enough to get you to the next time you're going to shoot another coat and the cup or the pot you can just take that stuff that you have in there and kind of swish it around now if you're using a base coat you're probably going to want to take the whole gun apart and uh, clean it out but I mean if you're going to be shooting the same color you just I would recommend what I did and it worked for me is to pour some of that stuff in there and spray it through and then kind of reverse spray it as much as you can and um, clean out the pot as well as you can. You should be good for your next coat. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So just a word of warning, the regulator and air filter on this are leaking pretty bad towards the end of my shoot. So uh, just be aware of that. That's what that noise is. I need to get a new one. So what you do is you take your fluid and you really want to put like, you know, like a half a cup in there. Not really a whole lot. And what you want to do is just squish it around some and then just shoot it out. That should get you through to your next shot of paint. Now, when you're all done with the gun and you're ready to clean it to go on to clear coat or you're just ready to clean it and be done with it, you should look in your kit that came with the paint gun and there should be a tool that looks something like this. You can use a regular wrench, but you're going to need either a regular wrench or one of these. These are nice to have. So the first thing you want to do is take the pot off or the cup. And you're going to set it aside. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take off your spray nozzle and this should be hand tight. I mean, if you need to, you can wrap some kind of wrench around this if it's too tight, but it shouldn't be. This should only be, you know, hand tight, as tight as you can. And undo it. And you're going to set that aside. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to remove your needle. And so on the back here, basically if you put your finger through to the tip of the gun, to the back, it should be a straight line back to a threaded nut or something along those lines that will allow it to go in and out. Sometimes there's two that change the fan size, but that one's on here. And the model I'm using is a ProTech 4000. So anyhow, uh, what you do is you untwist this right here. And once you get that all the way out, what you should find behind it is a little screw. These things you don't have to wash. I don't. I don't see any reason why you would wash these. They don't get any paint on them or anything like that. So you've got this. So you've got the the screw in piece, and then the spring that holds the needle. And set that aside. Now what you do is you can pull your trigger in. And when you pull the trigger in, it should push this back a little bit. And you'll just pull that right out like that, and that's your needle. Okay, so then you're going to set that aside. Then we get back over to, well, if you have your regulator on there, this is going in the garbage anyways, because this is just crap. Don't buy certain things from Harbor Freight, because it's just complete garbage. So, throw that away. Teflon off of there and so then you find the right one on this wrench if you have one of these wrenches or just get a wrench that fits it this is a it looks like it's saying 19 so 19 millimeter and unscrew this so when I bought this gun this tip 
was really, really tight, and I actually had to put it in my vise and crank on this to break this free. And luckily, I didn't damage it. But just if it is tight, don't worry. If that's normal. I don't know. Anyways, unscrew that the rest of the way by hand. And there you go. So I'm going to bring you in and show you what I've got that's going to go in the wash. So these are the only things that are going to be going in the wash. The actual gun, the needle, the tip, and the nozzle. That's it. So I've kind of developed my own little method. I take a bucket and I just put everything in there. So there's the nozzle, the tip, the needle, and the gun into a bucket. And then what I do is I take the wash and I just pour the whole thing in there. That way everything's completely covered up. And I let it set in there for roughly an hour. I mean, if I'm completely done painting and I'm not going to be using it for a while, I want it to be really clean for the next time that I use it. So just let it sit in there and every maybe 20 minutes or so I like to come up and take it and sift it around a little bit. Once your parts have sat for about an hour and you've you know jostled them ever so often, then what you can do is you can start taking them out and cleaning them individually. So I usually start with the uh, gun whole bulk of the gun first. Just hang it out and shake it off. Important, very important safety notice. You need to wear these and you need to wear these. You don't want it getting into your bloodstream and getting you sick. So your paint gun should have come with a couple of tools. Uh, this is just a wire bristle brush and I had this lying around from an old Harbor Freight gun that I didn't end up using because it was just garbage but it's a needle that you can put in. It's really helpful to clean out the tiny passages and stuff. What you want to do is you want to take the bristle brush and dip it in your solution and you want to go in there and clean the top passage where the paint flows through and pull out, and then after each time I brush it, I dip it again to get whatever I've broken off. Then you want to go through the front of the nozzle there, and you want to make sure all your threads, that you get them as, as good as you can, like that. Just go around, use your mind, you know, get all the paint out, that's the whole idea. Use your eyes, look at or maybe something's gunked up. Clear coat's kind of a pain to see. So then once you've done that, then you want to go through these holes, these air passages, and just make sure that nothing got in there. You know, if there was a leak or something like that. You want to get it cleaned out. And so you go around all those. And then, if you look down in the gun hole, you can see there's a hole there. And I like to take that needle and run it through there. Uh, no. Look, I don't want to crash. no, don't crash. I just hit the brakes. I just almost... Here. I can't see. I can't see. Tell everybody at home what you're doing. Okay, I'm riding my bike, everyone. Are you having fun? Um, yes. What do you think of the car? Oh, I like it. Yeah? Uh-huh. And then just start pulling out piece by piece and just kind of doing the same thing. Cleaning out the rings, cleaning out the face of the nozzle, like that. You want to just get any paint or clear coat out. Use your needle tool. You can even probably use a needle. You just go into the... Let's see if I can focus it. 
There's the little holes there. There's little holes right here and here going out. You want to just go through those and clean them all out the best you can. And then once you've cleaned that, set it to the side. Get the next part. Your nozzle is just basically a bunch of holes, and so you're just going to go through, like I said, with a needle, and just you know clean them all out individually, just like that. Make sure you get them all, and then rinse it off. Set it aside. So for your needle, what you're going to do is you're just going to take the brush and just brush it off. Just get everything off of that needle because the needle is what allows the paint to pass through. And then set it aside. Then what you can do is take your bucket that's empty that you've poured everything out of, set it somewhere, get a funnel, and then you can pour back in and reuse it again later. Now that you don't have any chemicals that can splash into your eyes, and onto your hands, you can take your gloves on if you, off if you like. And then you're just going to start drying these parts off, inspecting them, making sure that there's no paint or clear coat, whatever it was that you were using, each one individually. You could even use a Q-tip to go down in there and clean those out. And then set them aside. And same thing with the rest of them, just nozzle, take it aside and wipe it out really good. And the gun, just clean off the finish. Wipe it down really good. Same thing, just go in here and wipe out all the threads, just get all the loose debris. Then hook up a spray tool, and then you can take these and spray them up. out. Then it's just a matter of assembling everything back in the proper way. So you want to take your gun, then you want to take your fluid tip, put that on. Like I said earlier, you can use either a wrench or you can use the supplied wrench. And when you go to tighten this down, you just hand tight. You just want to put some force into it. Then at that point, then take your clean needle, slide it down, and push it into place. Just like that. Check your tip, make sure that you've got no residue or anything like that on there. And then you can take your spring that you did not wash, slide it over the needle. Take your fluid selector, push that on, and screw it into place. Then, what you want to do is take your cap, make sure you don't cross thread anything, so then you'll have a lot of problems. So, you want to get this down to where it starts to tighten so you can barely move it. And then you want to line it up so that it is perfect. And then you have the majority of the gun assembled. So now you take 
your cup and tighten that down on there. Take your lid and there you go. So if you want to learn more things, tune in next week and I'll teach you something else.